You guys know that I install a lot of programs on my machine. I review a lot of programs on, on the channel, a lot of window managers and terminal emulators and music players, and I've got a ton of stuff on my machine. And a matter of fact, my machine can be considered bloated. If I open a terminal right here, you can see in NeoFetch here how many programs are currently installed on my Manjaro system here. 1,479 are installed by Pac-Man. Four flat packs are also on the system. Four snap packs are also on the system. That is a lot of packages. Let me do a quick ls in my home directory and let's give it the flags lah. So we have all the files and directories in my home directory, including the hidden ones. My goodness, that was a lot of files. Uh, I can't scroll back. Let me pipe that through more. And this is everything in my home directory. Let me scroll down. This is all the files and directories in my home directory. I could just hit enter forever here. <laughs> wow. I am not exactly sure how many things are actually in my home directory. We should get a count of this. Let me get to the end here and quit out of that. Let's do a count. 171 files and directories are currently located in my user's home directory, uh, mainly because most of it are dot files. The dot files are the configuration files that programs that I install place on the system. I didn't place them there. They were automatically placed there by the programs that I, I, I installed on my system. And quite frankly, it's gotten out of control. The, the home directory is just a complete mess. I've got dot files everywhere. Lost control of my home directory. You guys, you're losing control of your home directories because the same programs I'm installing are probably a lot of the same programs you're installing. And these programs, they really don't respect uh, specification standards, they just place these config files and these config directories wherever they want in the home directory and quite frankly, I'm tired of it. So this problem of programs just putting dot files wherever they feel like uh, rather than respecting standards this has been a problem for years. It's something that has annoyed me for a long time. What provoked me to make this video today was I came across a blog post. So this blog post is titled Dot File Madness, and this is from a fellow named Philip Borkiewicz. I, I, I don't know that I pronounced that last name right. I'm just going to call you Borky because that is a fantastic nickname, Borky. Or a computer scientist. I love that. Uh, hope you're not offended. <laughs> anyway, fantastic blog post here. Dot file madness. We are no longer in control of our home directories. And he mentions, you know, he had 25 ordinary files in his home directory, but he had 144 hidden files and directories. Uh, I, I was probably very similar. I had about 170 files and directories in my home directory. Most of them are going to be hidden files and directories. Dot files. Philip writes that he has no control over these dot files being placed in his home directory. He's not placing them there. The program is placing them there. He has no control over it. I don't have control over my home directory. You don't have control over your home directory. These programs just put these things there. You can't remove them. I mean, you can remove them, but it, it won't matter. For example, if I open up my file manager here, and let me uh, zoom in here a little bit, and say I wanted to delete one of these dot files or dot directories that I didn't place here, like Ursi right here. Ursi is a terminal IRC chat client, fantastic program. You know, it creates this directory itself. I didn't create it. If I deleted this directory, the next time I start Ursi, it's going to create this directory again and whatever is in this directory, whatever data. So I could delete it, but it's just going to recreate it the next time I launch it. So that's one of the things Philip is talking about here. It's like, we don't place these files in our home directory. The programs do. You can't even get rid of the dang things. Philip writes that you know, even worse is that some of these programs don't even place hidden files and directories in your home directory. They're placing normal files and directories, you know, like they're your standard user data that you created, you know, like some file, some text file I wrote and placed in my home directory, you know, rather than putting a dot in front of it and making it a, a hidden file. Um, in my mind, that's a pretty egregious offense. Uh, I hate that programs do that as well. 
Philip has a plea here for developers. I quote, To those of you reading this, I beg you, avoid creating files or directories of any kind in your user's home directory in order to store your configuration or data. This practice is bizarre at best, and it is time to end it. And then he goes on to write, I'm sorry to say that many, if not most, programs are guilty of doing this. So, where should programs be placing their dot .files? Well, there is a standard out there called the XDG base directory specification. And it's from uh, free desktop, freedesktop.org. I will link to the freedesktop.org page here on the XDG base directory specification. But uh, a cleaner read is actually the Arch Wiki uh, page on the XDG base directory specifications. And basically what we, the important thing here is, for, at least for us, is our home directory and programs really should place all their configuration files in home slash dot config. So if I go back to my desktop here, let's open up the file manager again here and I'm going to zoom in and right here in the home directory, there is a hidden directory called dot config. That is where all these programs should place their config files. So if I open the config here and go to the top of the dot config directory, you know, zero AD, it respects the specification. So it places its config files here in the dot config folder. So does Cadence, GIMP, Joplin, Mousepad, uh, some folder called Philip Schmider. That doesn't tell me what that program is. Uh, clip grab. <laughs> okay. And that's another thing, the naming conventions. Some of these programs uh, come up with some crazy names. I had one uh, random config file called troll or something on here. I don't even know what the hell that is. And this one here, unknown organization. That is the folder for its config files. Unknown organization. Let's see who that is. Zoom. Zoom.us, really? Uh, well, that's proprietary software, so I guess I'm not surprised, but it's good software. And you know, it's, they make money, so it's a pretty large company behind it. You would think they would have better sense than to name their configuration directory unknown organization. So let's discuss some of the programs that do not respect the XDG based directory specification. So if I go back to the home directory and some of the programs that are not putting their config files in the dot config directory like they should include cross FTP. I'm not sure why I have cross FTP installed, but I installed it one time. It creates its own dot directory called dot cross FTP rather than putting its config files in dot config slash cross FTP like the specification says to. Uh, Dropbox also doesn't respect the specification. Electron, uh, Jim, i3 has dot i3 rather than dot config slash i3 of we already talked about Ursi, Jitsi, uh, Lynx, Moonchild Productions. That is somebody's dot config files, but it's not in the right spot and that's a horrible name. What the heck is Moonchild Production? Pale Moon, the Pale Moon browser. Well, let me get that thing off my system immediately and delete that folder. I don't even use Pale Moon. And of course, Mozilla doesn't respect the standard either. So you got Firefox and Thunderbird on your system, you're going to have a .mozilla directory instead of them putting it in .config slash Mozilla like they should. And I'm going to go back to the Arch Wiki page on the XDG base directory specification. Other than the home slash .config directory, they also recommend that uh, programs use the home slash .cache directory. That is where all user-specific non-essential cached data should be written to. So if I go back to my file manager here, in my home directory, you see I have a folder called .cache. Similar to .config, you know, use, uh, programs should place their cache data in .cache slash name a program. Uh, sounds pretty reasonable, right? Th this doesn't sound like it's hard stuff. Uh, User-specific data files should be written to .local slash share, so home slash .local slash share. And of course, I'm going to have that file uh, or that directory here, dot local. So those are the three that we're interested in. It's those three directories in your home directory, dot config, dot cache, dot local. This is where these programs need to be placing their, their dot files, right? They don't need to create their own directories, their own dot directories, and their own dot files inside my home directory because the home directory, quite frankly, has become a mess. It's just cluttered 
with all kinds of stuff. I don't even know what some of these files are. Are they config files? Are they cache data? What are they? Now, I do want to commend a lot of programs out there for adhering to the XDG base directory specification. And why the ArchWiki even has this page, they have this page really as a tribute to the programs that actually follow the specification. So they actually have a list of programs that used to not follow the specification. A lot of them, they didn't follow the spec specification because the XDG based specifications were written in 2003. Some of these programs are much, much older than 2003. Things like Vim, for example, the reason Vim doesn't follow the specification is because Vim has been around for decades. And I guess it would cause them some headaches to rewrite Vim in such a way as to place config files, for example, in ohm slash dot config. But here are the programs that used to not follow the specification, but now do. So some that jump out at me, Blender. Blender used to have a folder in your home directory called dot blender, but now you can actually have a folder in dot config called blender and put your configs there. Uh, Chromium, Dolphin is also in here, GIMP is in here, LibreOffice follows the standard now, used to not. Uh, Nano, MPD, MPV, MUT, the email client, terminal email client. Qtile, <laughs> the tiling window manager, my favorite tiling window manager, follows the specification. You'll find Qtile's configs in dot config slash qtile where you would expect it to. Anyway, I'm going to link to the Arch Wiki page on this because I, I think that's really neat that they actually you know, basically give a, a thumbs up to these, these programs that have adhered to the specification that originally did not, and I applaud them for that. Hopefully, going forward, more and more developers start following the XDG standards because Quite frankly, I am getting a little frustrated having so many dot files just hanging out in my home directory. Many of these things, I don't even know what program put them there, what they even do. It's gotten out of control. Before I go, this show was made possible by Ansem, Carlos, Chris, Dylan, Leo, Rob, Robert, and Tony. They are my highest tiered patrons over on Patreon. They are the producers of this show. The show was also brought to you by all those fine ladies and gentlemen, all those names you see on the screen. Without each and every one of those supporters, none of this would be possible. If you would like to support my work, please consider doing so. You will find me at DistroTube over on Patreon. Peace, guys.